We're talking about everything you need to know when it comes to masking inside Procreate today. We're covering clipping and layer masks with real examples and why you should never use Alpha Lock and what to do instead. Let's get into it. First up, our clipping mess. This locks the layer's contents into the layer beneath it. And the main advantage here is that it's non-destructive and it's stackable. So I'm going to show you how both of those work by using a heart as an example. And I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. Next, I'm going to grab this yellow color and we're going to draw a straight line off the corner of the heart. And you can see it stops at the bounds of that heart. And if I disable the clipping mask by tapping on the layer thumbnail and choosing clipping mask, you can see that line extends far beyond the heart. But when you apply a clipping mask to it, it locks itself into whatever is on the layer right beneath it. So I'll finish drawing these lines in and now we'll talk about how you can stack these. So if I create a brand new layer right above my yellow layer. Apply a clipping mask again by tapping on the layer thumbnail and choosing clipping mask. We're going to grab this lighter red color and do the exact same thing by drawing additional rays all the way around the heart. I'd like this red layer to go beneath the yellow layer. So in the layers palette, I'm just going to drag that layer right beneath it. And you can see that I'm retaining the clipping mask because you'll see those little arrows on the left side. But as soon as I disable the clipping mask on this red layer, because I've got a mask above it, it's also going to disable the layer above it. If I apply a clipping mask just to the yellow layer, you can see how it's masking into the layer right beneath it, which is the red lines. Now if I apply a clipping mask to the red line layer, that's going to mask into the heart. What happens is, is all the layers are going to mask into the lowest layer when you have several layers above that layer that have clipping masks applied. This is also non-destructive and this is one of my favorite parts. Because we have separate layers, you can edit things individually. So if I want to erase portions of this red layer, I can do it because it's isolated on its own layer. I'm going to undo that because I don't really like how that looks, but now I want to give you another real example of when you would use clipping masks. So to do this, I'm going to head into my Bokeh Maker brush set, go into the flat filler category, and grab the stamp titled Filler 13. I'm just going to stamp it in with my finger, and now I'm going to color drop, hit continue filling, and apply this color to all the leaves. Now you can see I've got leaves overlapping, and I want to define that edge a little bit better and show that it's casting a shadow. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, grab a darker color, and switch my brush to the Edgy Ink brush from the flat extras within the Bouquet Maker. And all I'm going to do is follow the curvature of the top leaf and manually draw in a shadow. That looks nice, but my edges clearly need some work and to manually erase these would take a lot of time. So a nice way to avoid that is to go into your layers, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose Clipping Mask. Now the shadow layer is locking right into the main shape layer beneath it and I can easily erase any excess that overlapped where it shouldn't have been. And you can see how a effective that is. Let's repeat that process with these leaves. So I'm just following the curvature of the top leaf and painting in that shadow. And I don't have to worry about going outside of the bounds because I have a clipping mask. It's locking right into that shape. Let's head down here where we've got additional shadows that we need to add in. There's some on the side and then right beneath. So I'm just drawing those shadows in. If you'd like to learn more about drawing manual shadows and creating this flat style look with depth effects, it's all covered in my course, Flat Florals in Procreate, and I'll leave a link on screen. Now that these shadows are complete, let's look at our layers. And if we disable our clipping mask by tapping on the thumbnail and choosing clipping mask, you can see how messy we're able to get. We have a lot of freedom here. So I'm going to reactivate that clipping mask. And now let's talk about layer masking. And with layer masking, the main thing to remember is that black conceals and white reveals. It allows you to hide contents on a layer rather than erasing. And you can always unhide or reveal it again if you change your mind. And because of this, it's considered non-destructive. So let's use our heart example again. We'll head into our layers palette, tap on the layer thumbnail, and choose mask. When you do that, you'll notice that a brand new layer is created, but it's linked to the heart layer. And that layer mask layer is filled with white. That means everything is being revealed. If you remember, black conceals and white reveals. That means the entire heart is showing. So whenever you have a layer mask that is completely white, it means whatever layer it's linked to is showing in its entirety. So let's paint in black to hide some 
some portions of this heart. You'll want to make sure that the layer mask layer is selected so it's the brighter blue color. Then we'll grab the black, so double tap where black is to get true black. And now I'm just going to come in here and make it a broken heart. And you can see as soon as I start drawing, I'm hiding portions. I'm not erasing them. You'll notice I am not using the eraser tool. I'm using a paintbrush and I'm painting in black because I'm hiding these portions of the heart on the layer mask. So I'm adding a few more details just so you can see how this works a little bit better. And now if we look at the layer mask, you can see there's black where the portions of the heart are being hidden. So it gives the illusion that it's being erased. But the nice thing is, is because it's non-destructive, you can always bring back parts that you don't like. So if I switch my color to white, now I can re-reveal because remember, black conceals and white reveals. So if I'm painting in white, I can re-reveal that layer. Since this layer mask is attached to the heart layer, everything I do to the heart is being affected. So whenever I'm painting in black, I'm hiding portions of that artwork. And whenever I paint in white, I'm bringing them back. And on the little layer thumbnail, you're always able to see where you've painted in black so you have an idea of what portions are being hidden. And with a layer mask, you can turn off its visibility. All you have to do is uncheck its visibility and you can preview that layer mask on and off so you can see what types of adjustments you would like to make. So let's look at another real world example of how you could also use layer masks. I've got a brand new canvas again and I'm heading back into the Bouquet Maker brush set. I'm going to grab hero number 36 from the flat hero category and just stamp it in with my finger and resize it a bit. I'm going to create a brand new layer and stamp in an additional rose. This time it's hero number 38. I want this one to be to the left of the first one, so I'm just rearranging a little bit. Now let's say I am composing a bouquet of line art florals, and I want the rose on the right to appear behind the rose on the left. In order to do this, we can use layer masking. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of the rose on the right. That way I can see its lines a little clearer. That way it's not as confusing with the other one. And I want to mask away any lines that are happening on top of the other rows. So I'm going to the first layer, which is the rose on the right. I'm tapping the layer thumbnail and choosing mask. And remember, black conceals, so I want to make sure I've got black selected. And I'm going to switch my brush to the edgy ink brush from the Bouquet Maker brush set. And I'm just going to come in here and paint with black. I'm not erasing, I'm painting with black, so I'm hiding these portions and I can always bring them back if I ever change my mind. Now I can increase my opacity and just like that, we've got one rose appearing in front of the other without any distracting overlaps. But now let's say as I'm building my bouquet, I decide that I want the left rose behind the right rose. So let's change that. Because we're working non-destructively, I can just delete a layer mask and then it's gone, like it never even happened. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the left rows now, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose mask. I've got black selected again because we're hiding portions of this line art. I've got my edgy ink brush and I'm just painting over any overlaps. As I did this, you'll notice I went a little too far where I shouldn't have, so all I have to do is switch to white and I can bring those back immediately. Now I can switch back to black and continue masking away the lines that I don't want seen. Once that's complete, I can just increase my opacity, and now I've got the right rows in front of the left rows. Now it's time to talk about Alpha Lock. This allows you to quickly lock new artwork into a layer's contents, just like a clipping mask, but this is a destructive process because all of the art is locked on one layer. So I'll show you how this works. We'll use the heart example again, and we're going to kind of replicate what we did with the clipping mask example since they're so similar. In order to apply alpha lock, there's two ways. You can either with two fingers slide the layer to the right. You'll notice there's a checkered background. It's a little hard to see, but it's definitely there. Or you can tap on the layer thumbnail and choose alpha lock. Once again, you can see that checkered background. And if you tap on the layer thumbnail, you'll see a check next to alpha lock. Now let's grab our yellow again and I'll paint in these lines all the way around the heart, just like we did with the clipping mask. I'm grabbing the lighter red color, and this time let's just change up the design a little bit. I'm putting these little triangles in the corners, and now I wanna fill the triangles with color to make it nice and fast, but you'll notice because everything's on one layer, when it goes to fill it in, it can't grab just that one color because there's a similar color near it. And even if I reduce my threshold amount, I can't make it work because I'm working on one layer instead of multiple layers. This is another example of destructive editing. Because I don't have separate layers, I'm forced to manually color in 
all these little triangles all the way around. And I'm also adding some dots here just to change up the design a little more. So let's say I don't want the dots here and I just want to erase them out. If I grab my eraser tool and go to erase them, I'm erasing everything because once again, I'm working on one layer and this is a destructive editing process. So I recommend never using alpha lock for that reason. Use clipping masks instead. And if you're using multiple colors, use stackable clipping masks. You get the exact same thing only with separate layers. I've put all of this info into a free cheat sheet for you and I'm not even locking it behind an email signup. Although I would love to have you as part of our community, I'll place a link right beneath the like button and you can just download that directly. Subscribe for more tips like this and I will see you next week.